Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the sphere trace for objects node. Let's run through a quick little example. This is our sphere trace for objects node. We're starting where the sphere is. We're firing four a thousand units, and if we hit anything appropriately it's going to go ahead and return back a hit result. In this case, I have it set to stop when it hits something that is static. And for my map, that will be this wall here and this wall here. No, little wall here, there we go. Now, if you ran this, you'll notice, well, it doesn't really look like a sphere. It looks like a line, and that's true. If we open up our sphere trace for objects, and we go ahead and compare this to our sphere trace, by channel, we're not really going to see much of a difference. I've covered the basics in the sphere trace by channel video. The sphere trace for objects is going to cover what the difference is. And the difference is honestly how it traces. Does it do it by the visibility channel or does it does it by the object quote unquote channel? Now by object channel, what I mean is the object type for the collision. If I pull up this collision for this sphere, you find an object type. And by default, this item here is a world dynamic object type. If I was to plug in an object type array, it would allow me to set the type of object. So in this case, I have it set to be stopped by world static. And if you mentioned, remember I mentioned before, my wall here is world static. Let me go back in here and change this to world dynamic and hit play. And you'll notice it now stops at that item there because the cube is set to world dynamic. If my player walks in front of it, well, nothing happens because my player is set to pawn. To show you that, we'll change our collision type to pawn and hit play. And when my player walks in front of it, you'll notice it, the player now collides as the pawn object type. Now you still might be asking, well, this is still a line trace. Where is our sphere? Well, our sphere comes from the radius node here. If we plump this up to like 25 and hit play, now we have an actual sphere that is firing forward. It may not look like it, but once we walk in front of it, you'll now see the sphere collision volume where that red square is where on my pawn it's hitting. And where it's hitting is the collision volume I have around my player. If we change our type back to something like the dynamic and hit play, it's easier to see. The end of our sphere is hitting the edge of our cube here, and that is our impact point. If we change this to, oh, I don't know, let's go with 60 and hit play, you'll notice it's hitting the inside of our sphere there, and it's not quite getting to our cube. And if I walk through it, you'll actually notice it's colliding off the little round nose at the front of my player. And as I move, you'll see it's updating appropriately. So the difference between the object type and the channel type is, again, you use the object types. And I can't have more than one. I could have the pawn, and I could have static, and hit play. And now you'll notice it's colliding against the wall, or I walk in front of it and collides against my player. The Sphere Trace for Objects does have one nice feature. You can actually use it to determine from a origin point or the start point in a circle around it what it's going to collide with. Rather than going from a start to an end, if you plug the end point in here as the same as the start and we run this, let's make our radius a little bigger, you're going to get a sphere around your origin point. But you'll notice when I walk into it, nothing's happening. Because the way traces work, it needs to sweep. It needs to actually check from each step from the start to the end point. If the start and the end are the same, it never gets a chance to check anything, and it will basically return nothing. Hook your starting point up into an add vector node, and maybe add something small, like maybe a point 0.1 on the Z. Now when we run this, it is doing a small, tiny sweep. And if I walk into it, when it does that sweep, it's going to detect 
the pawn properly because I've gone ahead and set up the pawn as a collision type. That is going to go ahead and wrap up our sphere trace for objects node.